This over here is an RTX 4080 TUF from ASUS. And if we take this card, right, look at the design and everything, the size and everything. If we're gonna copy this and paste it, boom, then we get something like that. As you can see, it's exactly the same design. They look pretty much identical, right? But there are some big differences in designs underneath and in performance. In fact, this tries to compete with the RTX 4070 Ti from Nvidia. So we've got these cards here. Let's have a look how good is the Radeon RX 7900 XT without the second X as a creator. How well does it do in creative applications and can it actually be competitive according to the competition. CCL and their latest deals. If you're looking to upgrade your PC or buy the whole system, then CCL is constantly running deals on their products. Can't pay full price on the deal? Why not spread the cost over 24 months for 0% interest on products over 99 pounds? Use the code TN10 to get a special discount when spending over 250 pounds. Check out CCL and their latest deals in the video description below. So I was the same as you at first. I thought these two GPUs are literally copy-based design of each other, which they kind of are, but actually there's big quality differences there, as you can see. So this one over here is the AMD card, and then this one over here is the Nvidia card. And straight away, one thing you can see is that the PCB on the AMD card is much longer, like the pass-through on the Nvidia 4080 is just ridiculous. The last one is just coming through. It could be because of the power connectors. So had, they had to extend it a little bit longer to have the, you know, old 8-pin PCIe connectors, as you can see from the side in there, rather than just the, you know, 16-pin there. But a lot of the things from the side are the same. We can see GeForce and then Radeon here. But actually the main difference that I have found is that the actual quality of the like metal is actually different. Actually, have I said actually a lot of times? So in here, you can see that there's slight difference in the metal color, but it's not just the color, it's actually the metal as well. So if I tap in here, this is full solid metal all the way through and all the way around. So it's very much heavier than this one. This one is just molded kind of metal around it to make it look like it on an angle. Then you can see that here, this is just solid metal inside here on the Nvidia card, whereas Asus card has an actual empty slot in there. And you can see that this is just a piece of metal molded around, whereas the Nvidia card here has a full full on kind of one mold of the metal whole construction in one whereas AMD card has been patched together. You can see that in the end here as well. The AMD card has like an ending and they've been folding here and that's why the corners aren't as perfect. You can see and all the lines aren't lining up as perfect as Nvidia card which has just like full on fully metal uh, design on all of it. And you can also see it in here whereas on the Nvidia card some of the Tough gaming and the graphics are actually embossed. But on the AMD card, we can literally see them just printed on, so it's a little bit cheaper. But this video is about this 7900 XT and to see if this is actually worth buying because it has such an overkill of a cooler. And um, that's one of the first things that I have an issues with with this card. You're paying so much for something that you don't need like at all. So first of all, let's have a look at some of the specs just to put in perspective like where this card lines up in the marketplace right now, what the cards, you know, are going to go for for the same price range and so on. So we're going to be comparing the 7900 XT, 7900 XTX, 4070 Ti and 4080, just to kind of see like the performance difference between them two. The 7900 XT is a Navi 31 XT GPU as well. So it's the same as the 7900 XTX, except the other X in there. They both use five and six nanometer processors, depending some of the core dies or processes or cores are actually on different than the IO die. So that's why there's a mixture of processes because it's a chiplet design GPU. The die size is 520 millimeters in squared, which is much larger than the 4070 Ti and 4080. The memory type is GDDR6 and we have 20 gigabytes of VRAM, which is much more than the 4070 Ti and 
even the 4080. The memory bus is 320 bits, which is much larger than both of the Nvidia cards. And so is the memory bandwidth at 800 gigabytes per second. All of the cards use PCIe Gen 4 X16 slot, and in terms of the TDP, it's rated at 300 watts, but this model here is pulling 333 watts from the socket. In terms of the MSRP, this card is $900. And I don't see a lot of these on sale right now, but they are about 900 to 950. You can get some of the brands out there. I'm gonna try to leave all of these in the description below as well. If you wanna pick up any of these cards or check them out or the availability as well as the latest pricing. For my GPU test bench, I'm using the i7-12700. For motherboard, I'm using Asus B660 Creator D4. Using 64 gigabytes of Kingston Fury Beast RGB 3600 MHz CL18 DDR4 RAM. Cooler is Deep Cool Castle 360 EX White. The case is Fantex P600S with panels off, so basically open test bench. For SSDs, we're using Samsung 980 Pro 1TB model, and for the PSU, there's the Asus ROG Thor 1200 watt power supply. First of all, some of the power draws of these GPUs the 7900 XDX pulls 333 watts at maximum maximum power out from um, you know, total board power. The embryo temperature I tested this with was 22.5 and the 30 minute temperature over ambient was 33.5 degrees. Just to put this in perspective, this is the lowest GPU temperature I have ever recorded on this channel. Lower than the Noctua RTX 3070 or 3080 it's just absolutely ridiculously slow temperature for a GPU. The 30 minute hotspot was about 51.5 degrees, which is not the slowest, which just shows that the actual hotspot is quite hot, but the cooler makes the GPU temperature just so, so cool. So it's massively over-engineered cooler that you don't really get any extra performance. We could easily let it run a little bit higher. So to have 56 degrees at 100% utilization when just letting it run for 30 minutes on Fermark, that's ridiculous, ridiculous GPU temperature. Compared to the 7900 XDX from PowerColor Red Devil model, we're seeing 43 degrees over ambient, which is pretty much 10 degrees higher. The 4070 Ti has a much smaller cooler and is about 12 degrees higher. But the 4080 here now is actually pulling less power. We have much hotter temperature and our 30 minute temperature is still higher than this one over here, which just shows that we really don't need this cooler on this GPU. We're gonna look at the benchmarks now, but in order for you to get an accurate reading of the price point, I highly recommend you check out the latest pricing in the description below where you can actually click on the link and see what this goes for on the market when you are watching this video. And then the performance benchmarks actually make sense because you know the actual market value or pricing. So we're looking at Geekbench 5 and obviously the Radeon GPUs don't have CUDA on there. So we're looking at OpenSea the 7900 XDX is 18% faster on the OpenCL. The 4070 Ti is 32% faster on the OpenCL. And the RTX 4080 is 64% faster on the OpenCL. The Vulcan score is about 10% faster on the 7900 XDX, about 11% slower on the 4070 Ti, and about 8.5% faster on the 4080. Just remember that the 4070 Ti is actually a cheaper GPU than this 7900 XT. In Photoshop, I am getting extremely high readings with these Radeon cards. And this is the second fastest card, actually still faster than the 4090, which is absolutely amazing. And we're getting the highest score there. XDX is about 0.6% faster in overall score. The 4070 Ti is about 4.8% slower in the overall score. But interestingly, the general score is about 14% slower and GPU score is about 9% slower. Maybe perhaps because of the memory bus. And the 4080 is about 3% faster overall as well, which is just really impressive performance in Photoshop. So in photo editing, it's actually a very, very impressive card, but that's where it just about stops. 
In Lightroom Classic, in my experience, the performance difference of the GPUs is absolutely no difference. So you don't really need a high-end GPU to get any performance in Lightroom Classic. So I can't actually give you an accurate measurement of which one is better because they're all within the margin of error pretty much. So in Premiere Pro and video editing now, the XDX model is 0.1% faster. So you can see that the XDX model is not worth purchasing over this XD model for video editing, but the 4070 Ti is about 13.7% faster in the overall score but interestingly the extended live playback is 40 percent faster on the 4070 ti which just means that the media engines on the radian cards aren't as good as on the nvidia cards or at least they don't have as good software support and the same on the standard live playback score we're getting 26.8 percent faster performance on the 4070 ti the xdx is actually quite a bit slower in some of the other applications and is only faster in the gpu score and the effect score but in general export and live playback score this is actually faster and as you can see, interestingly, the 4070 Ti actually gets slightly higher score than the 4080. So I'll have to test this again with the newer drivers of 4080 just to make sure that this is accurate. But because of the clock speeds of the 4070 Ti, it's a little bit higher than the 4080, which just means that the media engines are operating at higher clock speeds, meaning a bit better performance there. In Adobe After Effects, we've seen a very similar thing. The 7900 XDX is about 2% slower in overall score compared to the XD which is just interesting. But the GPU score is 3% faster on the XTX. The 4070 is only 0.2% faster, which is kind of within the margin of error and doesn't make any sense. And the 4080 is actually 1.5% slower than the 7900 XT. But in After Effects, this 7900 XT kind of makes sense. Moving on to DaVinci Resolve, and here usually the AMD cards do really, really well. So looking at the scores here, the, 70, the XDX is 4% faster in the overall scores, about 4 to 4.5% faster. The 4070 Ti is 0.2% faster in the extended overall score and about 2.8% slower in the standard overall score. So interestingly, the 4K media score is actually better on the Radeon. Uh, 7900 XT but the 8k media score on the other hand is 24% faster on the 4070 Ti. Interesting the GPU effects are still 16% slower on the 4070 Ti and Fusion score about 5% faster on the 4070 which is kind of an interesting mix of blows. The 4080 here is about 7 to 10% faster in the extended and standard overall scores. The 4K media score here, again, interestingly, is about 10% slower. Maybe perhaps because of the larger video memory on the Radeon cards, could be because of that. But the 8K media score here, which should use more VRAM, is actually 27.5% faster on the 4080. The GPU effects are about 13% faster and the Fusion score about 11.4% faster. So here we see kind of an interesting layout where the 7900XT performs very, very well in DaVinci Resolve. But yet if you look at the 4070 Ti, which is actually cheaper card, about 50, $200, maybe sometimes more, depending on the model you go for, is still performing slightly better depending on what you do. But the 4K media score is seriously impressive on the 7900 XT. It's one of the highest scores I've ever recorded on any GPO. So that's interesting. So for video editing, if you are on DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro, I'd say that the NVIDIA cards are, you know, much better. And the same with After Effects. Even though 4070 Ti is about 0.2% faster or they perform pretty much the same in After Effects because After Effects is massively CPU bottlenecked here. I'd say it's still not worth it here just because we get about the same performance with a cheaper nvidia cards moving on to 3d here now and when we're looking at v-ray then you can see that amd cards aren't supported on v-ray and then that's the only option to go with you know nvidia cards now blender now i do want to mention that in blender we're testing blender 3.4 and in 3.5 there is expectations that the hip or hip will be supported on the radiant cards which should make them much, much faster what they are right now. But if you are a 3D creator, perhaps using Blender, then this is the situation of the performance right now. Now we'll have to look at the benchmarks again when the new hip, 
is uh, supported on Blender. But for now, we can see that the 700 XDX is about 15 to 16 percent faster in the monster junk shop and classroom scenes. The 4070 Ti right now at the current state is 141 percent faster in the monster scene. 108% faster in the junk shop scene and 148% faster in the classroom scene. That's more than double the performance, which is absolutely ridiculous considering that the 4070 Ti is actually a cheaper card as well. The 48 is more than three times as fast as the 700 XT, which is just ridiculous performance canes in a blender. The GPU choice here should be quite obvious. In terms of Octane Bench, here again, unfortunately, it's not supported on the AMD cards. Hence, the benchmarks here kind of don't make sense because they're not even supported. Now, here I want to do ask you which 3D benchmarks would you prefer to see also on these GPU reviews? Let me know in the comment section below. Now, in general, overall then, what's the conclusion? Is this 7900 XDX worth it then? Absolutely not. I would say. As a creator, I think, yeah, it might be good for gaming. Go feel free to check out some gaming reviews of this card. But this is so over-engineered. This card should be much, much cheaper. Let's hack half of this cooler down, make the card much smaller. It doesn't need to be that big. We don't need to pay for this massive cooler. And perhaps if it was 10 to 20% cheaper than the 4070 Ti, it would look much more attractive to the buyers because in some of the simpler benchmarks, they were trading blows. If you look at the video editing performance, for example, then this card is about up to 13% slower than, you know, the Nvidia cards that are actually cheaper. So this card, in my opinion, needs to be about 15% cheaper than the 4070 Ti, then it would be interesting because for 3D creators especially, if we could get the hip finally working and more applications supported, then it could be interesting just because of the larger video memory. And I could see a lot of 3D guys choosing this over the NVIDIA if they had the stability what NVIDIA provides with their drivers and the GPUs and software support, as well as this larger memory buffer could come very, very useful in some of the larger 3D scenes. Now, in conclusion, I'm kind of left with a bit of a mixed feeling because on the other hand, the more expensive 7900 XDX, the power call model, for example, that we, we tested here, is much more expensive, but we're performing within 5% of that card and sometimes we're even faster than the 7900 XD as a creator, which just makes this card look a little bit better because it is much cheaper than the XDX model. But then on the other hand, when we're looking at the competition on the market and looking at the 4070 Ti, for example, then we can see that the 4070 Ti performs quite a bit better in probably most of the applications as a creator and supports more 3D applications as a creator. So it kind of makes you choose Nvidia over this one. Now, what I would like to see change is AMD really focus on getting creator support for their AMD cards. Not just gaming, let's talk about creators as well because if you can nail both of them, a lot of them would move over to this one. I know a lot of people would choose AMD cards as a creator even if they are worse at gaming but better at creative applications. But here we are, a bit confused, right? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. If you want to build yourself the best bank for buck creator PC, then check out the PC build guide in the video description below. There's a PC for you, for your budget there. I'll explain everything there to get the best performance for you when you're building a PC for your workflow, for you as a creator. Check them out in the video description below. I left this to last, but uh, what's going to happen now is I'm going to put this card here on my editing, main editing PC, and I'm going to let my editor use this card for at least about four weeks and then we'll come back and see what's it been like editing with the AMD Radeon GPU. I'll have full AMD system then, the 3950X and 7900XT. Let's have a look.